Welcome to the Lazy Geeks Network. What you want, what Welcome, everybody, to the Lazy Geeks Podcast on the Lazy Geeks Network. I'm Stephen Vargas. I'm Adam Riley. <laughs> Did you forget that for a second? Um, I had a weird moment where I heard your name and I was going to say it. I was going to say Stephen Vargas again. I'm, <laughs> I, I think my brain went on um, low power mode for a second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you went into settings and then reset for uh, yeah. Use the least amount of power. <laughs> so right. I'll just repeat what I hear. <laughs> <laughs> and this is our. And really, don't we always do that? Oh, yeah. like, just, you know, just like uh, yeah, that I agree with everything you say. Right. What what that person said. <laughs> and this is our weekly news podcast to discuss discuss the news of the past week for this week, June fifth, two thousand sixteen. Uh, first off. Yeah, we know we were off for two weeks. Um, the first, the first, we were actually scheduled to have the Memorial Day week off, uh, simply because we wanted to just, you know, enjoy the holiday. Right. Fuck it. Who cares? You know. Um, but uh, the week previous, there was, a, there was some shit going down between, um, not between the two of us, but to both of us around that same time. Okay, fuck Steve, all right? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh it was just there was a lot of stuff that was coming up and and so it just didn't leave us in a particularly good spot that would be enjoyable for you, you guys to listen to cuz otherwise you probably would have heard an hour of us just bitching and moaning and wailing. We just had a lot of personal stuff going on. We needed a little time to catch our breath and yeah. You and, know, it brood. happens. Yeah. And it's so brood. And bro- Batman level brooding. <laughs> exactly, you know. I mean, you know, and, and and Adam does it. I mean, he goes out there at the at, um, you know, he's he's not the the sit, the the hero that um, Phoenix needs or wants, but it it needs. It needs his kind of heroism. That's right. Um and uh so yeah, so not in this, not in this fucking heat. Though. Yeah. No. <laughs> he's got a temperature he's got a temperature gap. <laughs> Over a hundred? Fuck that. You guys can do what you want. <laughs> Let the cops deal with this. <laughs> right. Uh but uh one of the things I wanted to touch on on the episode that we actually uh that that we uh canceled on. So basically what I'm saying is thanks for bearing with us and uh and uh thanks for coming back for this week. So from this point on till I think the end of August before our season finale, uh, we should be pretty much on schedule from here on out. Um, but what I wanted to touch on was the Flash finale. Now, Adam hasn't really caught up with the show, but I've been watching it. Um, so hey, people... I'm I'm close. I've watched the first three episodes, hey, which is a lot, which is a lot closer than you were before that, you know. <laughs> um, and uh, so. Some people have said that the season two couldn't match up to season one. True, but at the same time, who, who can? Nobody right. can ever match up after the first, you know, um, after the first season. Because you kind of go for like, well, if this is going to be our only season, let's go for broke, you know. Um, but at the uh, just to kind of recap it a little bit and just kind of get Adam to what's going on, that he may actually take this summer and watch both seasons, mm. um, that... Uh, all of season two dealt with uh, the Flash trying to take on Zoom and trying to be powerful enough to overtake Zoom. And then we got introduced into the um, the uh, infinite Earths, the 52 portals of all the different Earths that are on there. And so far, we've only been in touch with really Earth 2 at this point. Uh, Jay Garrick comes to try to train uh, Barry, but ends up being killed by Zoom. Later to find out that it was actually Zoom that was impersonating Jay Garrick. Um, so with the finale, what basically Zoom is trying to do is he's going to try... He kills Barry's father in front of Barry. Because Zoom thinks that he liked the Joker in The Killing Joke. And that one thing I kind of was like, oh, they 
borrowed that one is he was kind of one Barry's one bad incident away from being like is kind of what he alluded to. So the whole purpose is he tells Barry that I'm just want to uh, I want to be the fastest. So you need to race me. And when I was watching, I was like, that's kind of lame. But then you figure out that what he's trying to do is he's trying to have Barry race him because using both their energies, they can use this um, this beam that will actually break into the multiverse and destroy all the multiple Earths out there. Mm-hmm. And um, Earth-1 will be the only Earth left, and then he would be the ruler of Earth-1. So what they um, when Barry first faces off with Zoom, he beats zoom up and then all of a sudden zoom comes out from behind zoom and kills basically kills himself basically saying time remnant he convinces a earlier version of zoom to go out there and willing to be sacrificed for whatever reason so what happens in this one is that barry is supposed to try to raise zoom but what he the basically the plot is is that if he can stop zoom before the portal reaches um capacity Everything will be fine. He'd have to kill Zoom. Well, what happens is, is Barry doesn't think he's fast enough. So while they're going through the race, the the energy is near reaching capacity. And all of a sudden you see another red streak pop in. And it's a time remnant of Barry. And Barry kind of does what happens in Crisis of Infinite Earths. Sacrifices himself to stop Zoom's thing. Um, to stop Zoom's... Uh, Uh, plan from going into effect and the way they showed him kind of disintegrating was almost kind of panel for panel what you saw in crisis of infinite earths where barry kind of slowly disintegrates Mm -hmm. and i was like i i kind of got a i got i got a bit got a little bit of a chub for that when i was like Mm -hmm. oh shit love that um so uh they take out zoom but barry at the end is very upset because you know his mother was killed by reverse flash and now his father was killed by zoom and he saved all the earths but he feels that he is just in an emotionally fucked place at this time um so he decides he you know he needs to do something iris tells him that she loves him and wants to give him a chance but because of everything that happened he's so emotionally fucked right now he's like i can't do this right now he goes i want to but i can't and she's like well you know i'll be here you know, whenever, whenever you're willing to give it a chance. So she goes back into the house and she's with Wally and her father and uh, Caitlin and uh, Cisco. And he looks through the window and he just stares and he goes, um, he goes, and that's why I'm sorry. And I was like, what the hell is he going to do? So he uses, he breaks this, um, the time, the time vortex creates a vortex goes back to when reverse flash killed his mom and beats the hell out of reverse flash Mm. saves his mom. And in the finale of season one, Barry had gone back to try to save his mom and stop the reverse flash. And then reverse flash would have gone back to his time. But you see that moment in season one where the reverse flash kind of looks through the door. And in that moment, he's supposed to see a future flash and in this one, he's the future Flash, and he looks back, and you see the old Flash, and he kicks Zoom's ass, saving his mom, and then all of a sudden you see the old Flash disappear. And she's looking up at him, and she, you know, and his dad's knocked down, and she's like, "Whoa, what do He goes, "No, no, it's okay. You're gonna be okay now." And then it cuts to black, and you're like, "Did they just fucking start Flashpoint?" Right. Like, it's like that moment where you're like, they, they, they just started fucking Flashpoint, didn't they? So it'll be interesting to see what happens when you come back into season three and see, you know, what's going to what's gonna go on. But one of the cool things that they did in season two is, uh, for those of you that don't know, and if you don't read a book. Um, <laughs> Get your knowledge up. Exactly. Um, Barry's dad is played by the 90s Flash. The guy that played the Flash in the in the nineties, um, I like that dude. That dude's always been he's always been cool. He also played Dawson's dad, you know. He plays like the perfect TV dad, you know. Yeah. Um, and John and I through the whole season, we've been uh, when we watch it, 
we always do kind of what you and I do on TV shows. We're like, you know, every time something came up and he was in the scene, we'd always go, well, when I was a Flash, what, what, what are you talking about? You know, we'd always kind of throw like, you know, throw, well, when I was a Flash, what, what are you talking about? What, huh? You know, <laughs> and what? Uh, what, what do you, what do you say? Huh? What? Uh, then, um, so they killed his dad off and there was in, in the whole season, there was a guy in Zoom's, um, I guess you want to call like zoo. He had a man of the iron mask and there was questions about who was the man of the iron mask. And zoom said, you wouldn't believe me if I told you. So finally, after they kill zoom off, they release the man of the iron mask and it is Barry's dad under the name of Garrick, Jay Garrick from earth mm-hmm. three, who is the flash of earth three and when they're and of course he has no son he doesn't know who barry is and barry's tripping balls because he sees this guy who's his dad and he's the actual flash from earth three and when they're about to send him back to earth two to take harrison wells and his daughter back there and then he's gonna go to earth three he's in full fucking jay garrick costume no shit. The hat, the hat, um, the 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 hat and the the suit and everything. I was like, oh my god, because my brother and I said Earth, that would. I go, I had said, I go, that would be awesome if he was the Flash. Like just, just like I go, but no, they probably wouldn't do that because it would just be like, wait, you know, it's just, it's too hokey, you know, or it just that would just be too cool for me. And then when I saw it, I was super excited. I was like, what the fuck? Oh, my God. They brought it back. It's the Flash. <laughs> That's awesome. So a little bit of I, I thought it was a little bit of fan service there, but it was it was it was pretty, pretty fucking awesome to see that. But, yeah, seeing him in the full costume, too, as as Jay Garrick Excuse me. was was really, really cool. That's, see, every time you describe the show, I'm like, fuck, man, <laughs> <laughs> I need to watch this shit. Oh man, but yeah, it was it was really cool. I really liked the finale, um, but yeah, that whole like when I watched it, I go, "Was he gonna go save his mom, or is he gonna stop himself like he did before, or something like that?" Right. Then when he saved his mom, I was like, "Oh my god, they just started Flashpoint. Like, how is this gonna work out?" <laughs> so, and now they got. But I thought that might actually might be kind of cool, given that Supergirl's coming over. That could change. Here's a situation, though. Starting Flashpoint, wasn't there a scene in the Batman vs. Superman movie where there's Flashpoint type situation going on? Right, right. Where you, yeah, where we. Saw Are it. they going to mix the universes? That's the real question. It's, like, <laughs> it's getting deep, dude. <laughs> oh, that would be funny. Would that be crazy? You Justice see, like, League. Like, you see Affleck pop in. You're like, what? Oh my what god! The fuck? <laughs> <laughs> or the other, the other guy that plays the Flash. He pops yeah. in there You're like, <laughs> what's happening right now? Suddenly you that, start crying. That, that, that sound you hear is the heads of every DC fan exploding. <laughs> I would I would be weeping uncontrollably. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, that would be that. So I'm really curious to see how that rolls out. Um, but yeah, you should totally check out. Even if you see season one, it's it's a it's great season starts with the multiverse and then season two the episode was it the episode before that oh no it was two episodes before that was the kevin smith directed episode and uh that was really good kevin smith said it was kind of like the sister episode to the season finale which was really a really actually really good heavy like emotional episode which when i watched it i was like good for you kevin smith that was a really fucking awesome episode yeah. So he he did a really good job with that because uh, Barry gets pulled into the Speed Force, and uh, so that whole thing. And then they, of course Jay Muse pops in, you know. Mm-hmm. And it's it's hilarious because they're coming out of Big Belly Burger and it's him and he's with this woman and he's like, oh, you know what? He goes, I gotta say this. This Big Belly Burger sucks. The one in Star City is so much better. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about the import shit. Of course, you know. <laughs> I was I was thinking, smoking weed. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so that that should definitely be cool. So I'm I'm definitely excited for what season three may come on. Um, lastly, for me anyway, uh, just another podcast. I know 
I didn't do a show in May and you know uh Heather has moved on to the I would say great state but I really can't with a straight face. So hey. she's gone to the state of Arizona. Um which is where you live, right? <laughs> You're a dick. <laughs> uh, so it was it's going to it was going to be even harder to to do a show with that. So I've gone ahead and revamped the show and um I'm going to try something new, something completely different, um, and um, go to debut it this week. So just be ready for that. It's not going to be the traditional, Jesus Christ, turn my damn phone off. Um, you over there playing Mario Brothers. Don't let them lie to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> um, I'm trying to get past this level. <laughs> God damn you, Bowser. Um it, uh, so yeah, so I'm gonna try something new this week. I'm gonna, I want to try to drop it this week, and um, and there's just a little more work on my end to do. But it's it's basically kind of a new show, but with my kind of point of view on it. So, uh, hopefully you guys will like it. But just uh, be ready for that on Thursday. It's still gonna be called just another podcast, but just a different format. So, so aside from that, Adam has some really important news to talk about right now. Listen, don't undermine my shit. No, right. I, I was setting you up. I, oh, okay. I, I was the hype man right there for you. All right, I'm just saying. I'm, I'm, All right, know. flavor, flavor, relax. <laughs> no, my uh, that's a joke. <laughs> so I was trying to introduce my kids to trading card games mm-hmm. for a variety of different reasons. One, because I want to play them, um, <laughs> and then also because I'm trying to get them to do something that isn't video game. You know, staring at screens all day. So. First, I tried Magic the Gathering, and that wasn't working out. <laughs> like, they liked it, but I had to, you know, my younger son is six. So Magic, a little too much for him, you know, reading the, you gotta, I mean, sometimes in Magic, you gotta pull the rule book out and shit. Right. So I was like, okay, well, how about I'll get him Pokemon deck, you know, Pokemon card game. Well, they all like Pokemon now. Hmm. You know, they like the cards. Then they found out there was cartoons and all this bullshit. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. And I was into Pokemon when I was younger, you know, and I, I went on Netflix. I'm like, I wonder if they have any Pokemon on here. They have two movies and two shows. So they have Pokemon Indigo Leaf, which is the original one, the one that I watched. And then they have Pokemon X and Y, which is the new one. So we started watching X and Y. Fucking dope. I don't care what anybody <laughs> says, dude. Like, yes, Pokemon is super cheesy. You know, it's it's... You know, and the kids get into that. But there's parts where I'm just rolling my eyes like, yes, I know. Be nice to everyone. You know, I got it. But then when the battles come up, I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> Stuff was tight. So, um, you know, pretty much I'm I'm going to be buying the kids each a themed deck mm-hmm. to play with. Um, and we're just we're a Pokemon household now, really. <laughs> and uh, I'm not I'm not ashamed or upset. I don't think it should you, be. I don't should think be you should. Don't think you oh, should be ashamed or upset. Oh, I won't be. <laughs> Damn it! No. So I need to get more cards because I bought um, this thing called a starter kit, where it comes with thirty, two thirty card decks um, that you can play against each other. But then the ultimate goal is once the player is ready, they combine those two, and it makes a true sixty card deck. Um, well, that's all I got right mm-hmm. now. So, and that's William's deck, my younger son. Um, so I need to buy everybody a deck. And you know, I got to get me a deck. I'm about to tear him the fuck up because I don't play games. You understand? <laughs> I'm going to be out there with like an ash hat on and shit from Pokemon. Just pop, 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 pop. <laughs> so that was me dropping cards on the table like a boss. Um, <laughs> so I just thought that was cool. Uh, and it's, it's funny because the kids are... The kids are like, they're asking me questions like super basic because they never, my kids don't watch regular TV because we don't have cable. They watch Netflix, Hulu, stuff like that. So unless they find something, they're not going to come across it. Right. You know, like the, the, it's not like TV where you're flipping through the channels on Saturday morning. You're like, what's this cartoon? Um, so they, they knew what uh, they knew of Pokemon, but they didn't know what it was. You know, because they just seen some kids at school with it. So I, I showed them the show. They're fucking hooked. They won't stop watching it. <laughs> and then they there's uh, the Pokemon website has this free-to-play um, Pokemon card game. 
which is fun, cool. I set the kids up. They're all ready to go with that. Um, and they they found out about the whole like you can go compete in tournaments and the card game and shit. I'm, like, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm just waiting for them to go. Can we all have fucking DSs or 3DS? <laughs> I'm gonna be like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> so I might actually that's where you go return, get a job. <laughs> right when the tax return comes, I'm thinking about uh, getting them all 3DSs. They'll all be fucking battling Pokemon together. <laughs> I think they're starting to figure out if they're in the shit that I'm into, they'll get more shit out of it. Right. Like, cause I'm like, oh, I'll get you guys a bunch of decks. It's fine. Yeah, it's cool. And they're like, oh, dad's over here getting us a bunch of shit. And I'm like, yeah, cause fucking my wife's in the back rolling her eyes. Like, yeah, cause he just wants to play. <laughs> Selfish. Of course. <laughs> Bitches. <laughs> That's all I want to say. Pokemon. Pokemon for life. Basically what I was trying to say. Pokemon. So, <laughs> <Pokemon Hello. picture. laughs> uh, all right well i guess on that note we'll hit the headlines yeah. first up is shouldn't be a surprise to anyone um looks like dc is canceling the final five issues of the new justice league of america According to Newsarama, in a rare move by the big two publishers, DC Comics have canceled the final five solicited issues of Brian Hitch's new 52 Justice League of America run. Justice League of America number 9 through 12 plus Justice League of America annual 1 have all been canceled, but DC tells retailers they will, quote, be resolicited at a later time. This series has gone through several delays. The Justice League of America 9 was originally solicited for March 30th, but was pushed back at the last time till June 15th. Number 12 and the annual were previously canceled and resolicited last month for an August release. So this is the second cancellation for each. When Hitch's Justice League of America issues do come out, it's one of DC's top selling. In June 2015, the first issue of the fourth highest selling book in the North American direct market, while March's 2006 number eight was still the top tier seller at number 34. Justice League of America writer artist Brian Hitch is, of course, the writer of the upcoming Rebirth Justice League relaunch, with the Rebirth one shot and debut issue both solicited slash scheduled for the release in July. I don't know why they would re-release those if they go into Rebirth. Like, why would they re-solicit those later? Maybe, I don't know, just to... F- I don't know. Nobody cares about Justice League of America. <laughs> right? I'm sorry. You know, it just nobody cares. Not enough people care. You yeah. know? Yeah, I mean, you know, who do you think you are? Civil War? I mean, um, Secret Wars? <laughs> oh. <laughs> where you canceled, where you kept pushing uh, issue 9 back, 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 back. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I've never really been into Justice League of America. I don't think anybody was. And I'm a big DC dude. <laughs> and I don't think I've even read more than two issues <laughs> of any run of Justice League of America. Like, it's always to me like you have you'll have a main team and then they'll try to make the same exact team with different characters in a different location. And it just feels cheap to me. It feels like the Alpha Flight. Yes, of, like, you know, uh, yes. of the DC run. It's just kind of what it seems like to me. It's the Canadian run. It's the Canadian Avengers, right. you like, know. <laughs> and even then, the Canadian Avengers make sense for people who are in Canada. I mean, I'm sure they like it, but to people <laughs> who aren't there, you're like, fuck, fuck that. I got my own Avengers to be worrying about, you know. So, right. I mean, whatever. <laughs> just to see who cares. I don't even know if they're gonna. Ha- Do they even have a rebirth issue? I have a doubt. No, I know it's just Justice League Rebirth, but I don't know. You know about that JSA. I can't wait till that Justice League drops. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you just can't start this one without kind of laughing, you know. Bethesda has dropped its first like big expansion for Fallout Four, which is Far Um and it's shit <laughs> for the PS4. Um, after actively working on Fallout 4 DLC, Far Harbor's uh, performance problems on PS4, uh, Bethesda now has a fix, a full re-release of the entire pack. Um, announced on the Bethesda forums, uh, the developer says they'll, you'll have to re-download the pack to fix the issues and provide 
provided the following instructions for installing it. So here you go. Here's instructions. Okay. Confirm Fallout 4 is not running. Highlight Fallout 4 in your PlayStation 4 dashboard. Press options and select close application to ensure Fallout 4 is not running minimized. Okay, so make sure Fallout 4 isn't <laughs> running. Select related wait, wait, item. Wait, wait, do I have to make sure Fallout 4 isn't running? Yes. Okay. We have a tech support on staff ready. <laughs> um, select <laughs> related items. You'll find this under the Fallout 4 icon in the PS4 dashboard. Uh, select my add-ons. Navigate to the download arrow next to Fahaber and select it. You should see a notice that Fahaber has been added to downloads. Wait for the downloadable content to finish downloading and install and installing before starting Fallout 4. Uh, Bethesda adds, if for any reason these steps do not work, <laughs> let's stop right there, okay? All you're doing is reinstalling it. Is installing DLC. That's all you're doing. If you didn't know how to do it now, <laughs> then you never had Fahaber to begin with. <laughs> so I don't know what the problem is. Um, if for any reason these steps do not work, you can delete Fallout 4 and all add on content and, sim and simply reinstall the game and add on to it. You know how fucking big Fallout 4 is? That's a long install. Yeah. I'm just saying. Currently, the new version of the DLC is only available in North America, but the Bethesda Twitter group has said that EU updates will follow in the very near future. Now, I want to mention on that, too, because that's pretty much the end of what's going on. But Okay, I live in North America, United States citizen, America. Okay? So, obviously, he drinks, he doesn't the, Bud he, he drinks the Budweiser brand, America. Right. <laughs> this... <laughs> This um, this pro particular problem in the gaming industry doesn't affect me because usually the updates come out in North America first anyway, unless it's a Japanese game and then you know whatever. But I gotta speak for humanity as a whole here that it's 2016. Why does Europe have to wait? I like, still, I never understood that. Get your fucking shit together. If it was a language issue, then I'd understand if select countries in Europe had to wait. But even then, the issues with Fallout 4's Fahaber was not language involved. Right. It was because it just didn't fucking work. <laughs> <laughs> so, why does Europe have to wait? Why is it... Oh, Europe and Australia, they always get the short end of the fucking stick. Yeah. They always have to wait well after we're already beating the fucking thing. You know, it's yeah. it's just it it doesn't make any sense to me, and I think it's bullshit. I'm speaking for um for our brothers and sisters across the pond, all right? I'm not selfish. <laughs> I know I you know we were talking recently. It's it's easy it's it's easy to be a good person when you're on top. Of course, you know what I mean. And I'm on top right now, <laughs> so I'm going to be a good person. You know, yeah. it's just when you're on the bottom. That's that's when you know. Fahab has been getting great reviews um, for the consoles at work. For the consoles at work. Say um, IGN was adding that uh, they said adds a large amount of large amount of great quests and content within its gloomy but distinctive island setting. Um, I just and and I'm surprised that that such a big company like Bethesda they have like a super large budget for these games. It shouldn't happen. It, yeah. it, it just should. I mean, test your shit on all the consoles and platforms that you're releasing it on and make sure it fucking works and it's not it like wasn't... it's not like the ps4 just came out either right and it's not like the ps4 what i don't understand is this isn't this isn't this same thing happened with skyrim yeah but that was on the ps3 because the ps3 had some cell um what was it called cell processor structure oh. it was weird right you know what i mean but it's not like that anymore Essentially, if you open up a PlayStation 4 and an Xbox One, it's like the same thing. Right. <laughs> you know? So I don't, I, I don't get it. It doesn't make any sense to me. And I think it was, it was somebody just wasn't testing. They weren't testing it properly. And it sucks. Yeah. And I play Xbox One mostly, so whatever. I'm PC for life. And, <laughs> and I'm fucking dealing with this bullshit unless you're playing the Batman game. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh. All right. Uh, despite a swirl of rumors this week, the upcoming Justice League film won't have any kind of tack on. 
um, hype in inducing addendum in its title. Uh, it's just going to be Justice League, according to DC Films' Jeff Johns. Uh, Johns tweeted confirmation that there won't be any colon or needless extra words thrown into the mix, like Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. Uh, or as far as the first movie, it is a two if two-parter is concerned. So that shuts down rumors that DC was considering titles like Justice League, Gods Among Us, Justice League, Angels and Demons, or Justice League, You Won't Believe What Happened Next. Apparently, the guy really needed to clear things up uh, because it already got uh, 2,000 retweets. Uh, Zack Snyder is concise and to the point Justice League opens on November 17, 2017 with a sequel due out in 2019. Kudos to DC to keeping it simple for the first time around and breaking away from those ongoing colon trends in the last few months, giving us, you know, Batman vs. Superman, John of Justice, Captain America, Civil War, X-Men Apocalypse. And Justice League 2 sounds a little stale, although it's probably not going to last long. And hey, Gods Among Us actually sounds kind of sweet, if not cliched, yeah. you know? Mm. And it would fit in that universe, you know? Yeah, exactly. You can kind of get away, away with cliche. I, I think any movie, I think now you really shouldn't have movies with two or three right. type. Yeah. I think we, we don't need to be that lazy, especially with comic book movies, because they don't do that in comic books. Right. I mean, you, you have know, issue numbers, but they all have new series. Right. You, know, you have to you have to title title the story arc. Exactly. I, 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 I always think it's but it, every time I see a movie where it says a number in the name, it mm -hmm. reminds me of like the 80s. Right. You know, like it's don't be lazy. Come up with something. Yeah. yeah. Which is why, you know, like, I mean, you know, like Captain America Civil War, it's better than Captain America 3. You know, it's like we're not these are these aren't the Rocky movies anymore. These aren't the, you know, you know, fr, you know, I mean, Friday the 13th started doing that. You know, Jason takes yeah. Manhattan or Jason in space, Leprechaun in the hood. You know, those kind of movies started that, you know, you know what? I appreciate that. Even though it was campy and stupid, you remember the title more. Like you're yeah. not going to remember two or I can't three. remember which one was it, two, three or four where, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. So whatever you want to talk about china <laughs> of course the great... they're angry about pokemon oh they're angry about pokemon well they're angry about what japan's doing uh oh okay well you know let's get into it i guess um in an effort to translate pokemon games into traditional and simplified chinese nintendo has essentially renamed pokemon characters including pikachu what right the Pokemon Company recently announced Pokemon Sun and Moon uh, for the Nintendo 3DS, which is the upcoming, uh, I don't know, just in case you don't know, um, Pokemon video games always come out in pairs, um, where one will have a handful of Pokemon that the other one doesn't have. It promotes training. It's always been that way. Um, unless you got the Pikachu edition back in the day, which was horrible because the first gym leader was Brock and he had Rock and Rock is weak against Electric. But whatever, we're getting into things now and, you know, I'm I'm going a little off the rails. <laughs> Sun and Moon, Nintendo 3DS. Uh, there are first Pokemon. These are. Hmm, I'm going to add a word so this makes sense. These <laughs> are the first Pokemon games to be translated into Mandarin. Uh, but in doing so, the effort overlook. The efforts overlook Hong Kong's primary language of Cantonese, so it's kind of it's kind of mind-boggling that Pokemon's been around for so long, and the video games are just now being translated. I guess it makes sense because they had that ban of consoles for so long, like video games, because they said it was damaging their youth or something. Mm -hmm. So th just now they lifted that ban. You're seeing like consoles being coming into China, even though they were getting it on the black market. And you believe that shit? With, <laughs> you went to the black market, what'd you get? An Xbox One, motherfucker. You're like, oh, shit. <laughs> <sighs> According to QZ.com, in Greater China, Pokemon will be officially called Jing, Jingling Bokemang. Bay, Bayokemang. Jing, so it's Jingling, which is J-I-N-G-L-I-N-G. -I -N -G, and then uh, Bayokemang, which I know I'm butchering, and I apologize to the homies uh, in China who are not listening to this, and anyone who, <laughs> who lives in unless, this country. Unless they break the Great Firewall, you know. Right. Um, I apologize to anybody who might be offended by the way I'm butchering your language. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> um, it's B-A-O. This is Trump's America now. 
B-A-O-K-E-M-E-N-G. <laughs> B-A-O-K-E-M-E-N-G. Um, so in Mandarin, uh, jingling means spirit or elf. And the second word is a transliteration of Pokemon. Um, so it's kind of like what it's Pokemon in, uh, which means pocket monsters, but whatever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of foreign shit going on. This article actually has it written in traditional Chinese. I don't even, I don't even know what the fuck that says. Um, in Hong Kong, however, it was Chinese letters. Um, <laughs> <laughs> or script, which translates into pet little elves <laughs> or spirits. <laughs> and Pikachu was originally translated as Bay or Bay K Bay K <laughs> I shouldn't have picked this article. I'm sorry. Bay or you could have just, just stopped earlier on. <laughs> no, fuck it. We're doing it. We're committed now. <laughs> Bay K Bay K Bay K Chiu B E I dash K A A dash C H Y U. Now, however, <laughs> it's Pikachu. So it's they've changed the name to P instead of Pikachu, it's Pikachu. Um, while that might look similar to the to the Western name in Cantonese, it actually reads as Pikachu. Pikachu, but it's P E I K A A J A U. Anyway, <laughs> I have a fucking headache and my tongue hurts. Where's Patrick um, when you need him? <laughs> Jeez, that's racist. Um, but true. <laughs> in, <laughs> we we go to our we go to our uh, our, Asian, our, our Asian correspondent. <laughs> oh, um, speaking on on a separate topic, and this is more just to tell Steve, but I guess people who are listening can listen. <laughs> I've been seeing um, Patrick doing some big things, man. He's been, he's been out there doing it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I follow him on Facebook. Yeah. I stalk him on Facebook. Well, of course. Make sure he's doing well. Yeah. Um, in protest at the changes, which also represents a broader fear that the Cantonese language is too often overlooked. Um, so basically, the main, yes, Pokemon fans are upset because they're changing the names, especially Pikachu. Pikachu's like the Jesus of Pokemon, <laughs> okay? But the, the main issue here is that, yet it, it's people in Hong book? Kong do you have that huh? velvet? Do you have that velvet Pikachu? That velvet <laughs> painting Pikachu? Um, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> no. Um, people in Hong Kong are upset because yet again Cantonese is being overlooked for Mandarin Chinese. Um, a handful of committed fans took to the streets, matching to the Japanese consulate, singing the Cantonese Pokemon theme, which probably was the cutest thing you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> Over 6,000 people have signed an online petition protesting the changes offering to boycott Nintendo entirely if the company does not get, agree to their request. Uh, Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon will be released on Nintendo 3DS on November 18th in North America, Japan on November Look, yet again, <laughs> you released in November 18th in North America and Japan and on November 23rd in Europe. Ain't that a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> It's so fucked up. Um, so basically, I thought this was interesting for a couple of reasons. One, because I'm surprised. it's, And I know why, but it's surprising that Pokemon has been such a big deal for so long. Like, it, it's part, everybody knows what Pokemon is. It's just one of those things. Except for China, I guess. <laughs> you know, and now that they can well, get no, video. Well, pro no, they probably have, a, they probably have a, a Chinese version of it. Oh, you I'm know? sure they do. <laughs> yeah. You know, but... It, I think now that they can get uh, video games from outside the country or video games in general, um, legally, <laughs> uh, Nintendo obviously is going to say, hey, this is a pretty big fucking market we're not tapped into. You know, and it's it, it reminded me of when I was a kid and the first time I played Pokemon, that there's actually going to be an entire country where the majority is going to have that feeling again. Right. And I was like, that's cool. Like, I, I just thought it was kind of cool. But, um, and also, too, I mean, why why aren't they making if, – if Cantonese – and Cantonese is a major language um, in China. Mo, mo, the majority of Hong Kong speaks Cantonese. Why are they overlooking it? I don't, I don't get it. You uh, know, but yeah. uh, I give probably money reasons, you know, whatever. Cantonese-speaking uh, Cantonese people are poor. 
<laughs> they wouldn't buy. won't buy this anyway. <laughs> Those fat cats at Nintendo. You know, right? I don't know. <laughs> the first comment says, "Interesting." Can't say I give a fuck though. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I've been in. Look, well, welcome, to, welcome in the, to Trump's Trump's America. <laughs> I already said in the round table that my household is becoming a Pokemon focused household. So this was <laughs> interesting to me as I read it now. I realize that it might not be that interesting to people, but <laughs> or even to you. <laughs> no, I'm still interested in it. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> uh, all right. On that note, uh, I think it's time we uh, we end the headlines. Still laughing over there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Cantonese oh. is a big deal, people. That's all I'm trying. To do. <laughs> uh, so uh, this week's discussion topic was one that we were going to we were going to do before, but now we also we were going to do the same one that we originally planned plus the first round, and basically we're going to be talking about DC's rebirth. Uh, obviously, we really should start with the one shot, which kind of set everything in motion. The, or as I like to say, the retcon flashpoint um, <laughs> issue. <laughs> um, so, uh, if you haven't, if you, I mean, this is really kind of the time. If you haven't got into DC and you're looking to get into DC, this is pretty much the time to do it. But you really. There'll be a few things. Where you'll go, huh? But a quick Google search will sort it out for you. Yeah. Some recent event stuff. Because there, there was stuff, especially with the Superman book, that I was like, what? Who is this dude? And then I, I looked it up. You know what I mean? And I was like, oh, okay. And then I was caught up. Right. Um, but uh, but this kind of sets up what's going to go on with the universe thus for this, you know, going forward. So I guess we should. What start with the rebirth? Let's start one-shot? with the rebirth issue, the one shot. Yeah. Okay. Um, first of all, I gotta say Jeff Johns did a really good job with this. Yes. Um, I I really enjoyed how he pulled Flashpoint, Crisis of Infinite Earths, uh, uh, Death of Superman, all of that into kind of this issue. You know, he he really touched on and the the soul the center of the story was Wally West. The original Wally West, not not the the New Fifty Two Wally West, right? Um, you know the redhead stepchild. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I thought that was kind of cool that it was that POV, and how it touched on all of these, you know, all of those different um, uh, big points. Kind of basically saying, I know we did Flashpoint, which kind of retconned everything, but now we're kind of and this is what I think what Jeff Johns was saying is that how Rebirth was supposed to be more of a of a reconnecting with their past as opposed to cutting it off, which I think in retrospect wasn't such a great idea. You know, getting rid of all of the canon that they had done through all the throughout, you know, the years. Right. Uh, but uh I thought that this was really cool how they tied everything together, showing that uh, it's all part of it. Now we're missing, what did I say, 10 years? All of us were missing 10 years. Um, and touching on the relationships that had disappeared, like with Black Canary and, um, and uh, uh, Green Arrow and, uh, and, and some of the, and, you know, some of the other stuff. So I, I thought it was, I thought it was very, very well done right it didn't seem like a patch job where you kind of thought like this is our way of kind of bringing everything back you use wally west who's a character who disappeared after flashpoint so bringing him back kind of was like the way of saying okay we're bringing him back but we're kind of bringing back the whole past too yeah with wally west coming back obviously he's he's bringing back he's the only one that knows something that everyone has forgotten and it's it, I read the the one shot. I'll admit I read it twice. The first time I read through it, I read comic books in a weird way. I always read them really fast the first time, and then I'll read it again right afterwards. <laughs> 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 then pour over. I don't know why I do that. Um, 
great issue. I, I, I there was a few things in there where I was kind of like, what? Just because I haven't really been following uh, the DC books for a while, for a little bit now. Um, but easy to catch up with. Uh, I think it's an excellent introduction into what they're trying to do. And I kind of like this idea more than a complete um, reboot. Right. Um, the New 52 obviously was a reboot. Um, but it's kind of cool where they're saying, okay, the New 52 still exists. That universe still exists. But these other ones are starting to come back too. It's starting to leak in. And I think um, I think it's interesting. It's, it builds to an over an over um, arcing arc i guess yeah um <laughs> an overarching arc <laughs> right and it all ties it ties are we spoiling we're spoiling yeah we're right? spoiling yeah okay um i think it was it was very interesting to call back to um the letter that batman received from his father from the other right from the flashpoint universe and and um and what he's going to do about that i i, I it, they're doing things in a way that it is dramatically different. And we'll get into that when we get into the first round, which I was very impressed right. uh, with, with, uh, with the three books I read because it was one I didn't read. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I don't know. you have anything else to say about the one shot? Well, I think with the one shot, um, the end definitely surprised me. That's the, that feels that, in it too. Yeah. I mean, it was um, – Seeing all, seeing that whole uh, thing play out, and it's all played out through Wally's ex- perspective, right? And how he's trying to use the Speed Force to kind of bring himself back. That he he's been kind of stuck in the Speed Force, uh, not really saying how he got stuck there, but that he needs to come back. Um, so you know he's coming back to people that he thought would remember him. So he comes back to you know uh, Batman and to. Uh, fucking his chick though you yeah. know and that gave Poop me the straight forgot him i was like yeah. damn i was like oh ain't that a bitch ain't These that like a bitch. loyal man exactly man um and then how um and then the reintroduction of the uh post death of, death of superman superman uh, because the new 50s two superman is is supposedly dead or actually yes. but uh I kind of read um, some previous issues on Superman because that was the one that I was most confused with um, because I didn't know. There was a whole death of Superman arc um, where basically he um, his cells were he had kryptonite poisoning and um, he basically in the last issue he um, he just exploded like with energy and was dust. He was Mm -hmm. gone. And um, he was uh, he was fighting. I don't know what was going on, but it was some sort of clone of him that thought it was him. Mm-hmm. But he was very unstable, and he was fighting him in typical Superman fashion. He didn't care about his own safety. He was trying to get the the other guy away. Right. And then this other Superman, who looks just like him, he has a beard, right. flies in, helps the new 52 Superman, um, and then he's there, and then he just dips. Yeah. Like, at the end. And it was, you're like, what? Who the fuck was that? <laughs> You know, so, but that that goes into the Superman issue, so. Yeah, and so it was, um, I thought it was very well written, and the fact that, like I said before, how it touched on Crisis of Infinite Earths, because Wally talked about how he became the Flash after Barry died, you know, and then uh, the, um, the Flashpoint, where it talked about Thomas Wayne and all of that. And then finally, when Wally was just like, okay, there's no way for me to come back now, he appears to Flash and says that, you know, it's okay. This is, you know, goodbye. It's over. I'm, I'm you know, I've resigned myself. It's okay to, to go away. And that whole bit there where Barry's looking at him and not sure who he is, doesn't remember him, and then suddenly does remember who he is. Um, he suddenly goes, Wally. And just grabs his fucking wrist. I was right. like, what the fuck? <laughs> exactly. You know, this you're shit ca- blew my mind. You're sitting there and you're feeling very you're, you're you are feeling the 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 feels in that in that scene because you're just like, oh dude. Because Wally's whole speech is just like yeah. so sad. Yeah. He's just accepted that he can't no one remembers him. So yeah. he can't come back. And he, it Flash was like because before that he's like 
thinking about Flash. That's my last chance. But as soon as he gets to Flash, he's just like, he's there's done. no point. You yeah. know, no one's going to remember me. Remembers with the last fucking second. Yeah. I'm out of the speed force. I was like, fuck, dude. And then the then the the very last the very last bit was kind of the what are we we're gonna cross over with Watchmen? I was like, are you we fucking serious right now? I know. When I saw Batman digging into the wall and then he pulls out the pin, I was like, what? And then I'm sitting here like, first of all, the Watchmen haven't been an active storyline in a very long time. Yeah, much less yeah. even. Over crossovered with the... they've never been crossovered with the regular DC universe. They were always in their own kind of thing. Because because you have to remember if you if you don't know the Watchmen was a one shot. It wasn't a series. It was a it was a trade. Right. You know, and, and it, it existed in its own little universe. So having the Watchmen come into the main DC universe is something that I'm really excited about. I think I think that's going to be um, very interesting to see how that plays out. And what, where they are at their timeline, right? Um, and stuff like that, because a few of those characters died in that fucking book. So I don't know exactly who's gonna come in. And it was, it was interesting too, because like you know, I saw that and I was like, what? Then you get that next panel where it's just the slow push into Doctor Manhattan City right there. And I was just like, what the fuck? Are they seriously gonna do that? So that's gonna be interesting. So I, I if, if the one shot. Even if you just, you know, you were kind of curious about it, I would still give it a read. It's, I, I think with everything, it is a good read, a good solid read for anyone that even if you're past, even if you just know the basic arcs, I mean, if you just know what happened after Crisis of Infinite Earths and, and Flashpoint, even if you just even know that, it's still a good read and you still have a good basis in that. I think the best thing that book did for me was, um, the the overall wally is narrating the book right basically and it it goes through his backstory which was good cuz i honestly needed a refresher on yeah. on wally's backstory and it, it cuz he cuz he disappeared after the flashpoint right and it it did it it did it in a way that wasn't pushy it it, it didn't pull you from the main story and it it inserted that emotional connection between him and the flash. And I think that was extremely important. So that scene at the end, after seeing all that was so much more powerful. You were just like, fuck, like this sucks, you know? And then, and then once that panel hits where he grabs his wrist, you're just like, thank Jeebus. Like you're just (laughs) freaking out. Um, love the book. It definitely worth the money Two ninety nine for what was it? 70 something pages. Yeah. That was a thick you know. book for that. Yeah. And this is also the first book in um, DC's promise. Hopefully they keep it this time. Right. Yeah. And all of their main line books are going to be two ninety nine fixed price, um, which is great. Cause that allows me to be able to buy them all <laughs> <laughs> um, in my head. Cause it, it's really, it, really, I couldn't afford it anyway, but I'm still doing it. Cause I don't care. Um, <laughs> So which book are we going to talk about first? Okay, so that was that was the first week that just came out, and then after this last week, came out uh, the rebirth issues of Superman, Batman, Green Lanterns, and uh, what was the other one? Uh, Green Arrow. Right. So let's do Green Arrow first, because neither of us ever really read that that book before. Right. I've never uh, been too crazy into green arrow yeah and and neither have i and and my brother started getting the book based off of you know the arrow tv show um so i i read uh arrow and um it was a good solid start for him i mean it was a obviously it pushes where he's you know because i remember when i was reading the book and then reading what um you know i remember the history that i remember uh for green arrow was being more of a uh, a liberal type of hero, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and so like the first page, you know, is where the, he, that chick walks out on him on a dinner and called him a, a disgusting liberal or something like that. Uh, cause she was a Republican Senator's daughter or <laughs> something along that lines. Uh, but, uh, it didn't, it didn't play on that too long. Cause that was one of my fears is like, Oh, we're going to get like this whole, you know, political preachy kind of thing on there but it it didn't hold out that it didn't hold out that long right um it just dealt with him really reuniting really the only thing the only thing that 
was liberal, I guess, was just that he fought for the poor, right? The, the downtrodden. But I mean, Republican can do that too. So it wasn't it wasn't really that big of a deal, right? Um, but it really kind of rekindled the because if you if you remember from Rebirth, if you read Rebirth, they talked about one of the big things that was missing out of the New Fifty Two was love. Because he was talking about all the the relationships that had happened in Wally's universe, and that wasn't happening here. Lois and Clark, yeah, uh, Black Canary and Green Arrow. A lot of those relationships were gone, and which if a lot of people might say, "Oh, I read it for the action and the, and the danger." We all like the little love stories in there too. You know what I yeah. mean? And when you take it away, you're taking a a part. It makes it a less realistic universe, right? You know. and and then suddenly because you're because there are those moments in those comics where you like the banter like you know like for me in the marvel universe i like the black cat spider-man banter back and forth yeah. or the electra daredevil stuff there's there's always that like you know sexual tension that you get in there and you know when you take that out it's like okay so they're just characters now that are either fighting or Bitching, preparing to fight <laughs> preparing to fight or bitching at each other because they can't fight each other at that point yeah. you know um so we we got that whole them kind of reconnecting and then them kind of having preconceived notions about one another because she you know tells him you know oh well you know oh you, you don't know anything about the poor because you know you're richer than this and you have this, all this money and blah 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 then he talks about the time he was on the island and then you have him making a joke about her. Oh, well, this is nice, sweet coming from a, you know, touring band singer, you know. <laughs> so th- we got, started to get that. And, and at the end of the one shot, you know, we got the uh, we got the moment where they're kind of like, OK, something's going to happen now. Uh, so I, I thought it was actually a, a really solid issue, kind of showcased both of them very well. Um but uh, I thought it was a it was a good way to kind of set them up as saying like okay we're bringing them back to this point. Yeah, I oh, think okay. I think, um, and it was cool that they played on that too. That he was super rich and you know he, she Black Canary was basically calling him hypocrite, right? You know, and then he pointed out he's like you know all this shit costs money. Like I can't, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know I can't be poor and have fucking expensive tech. You know, right? Which yep. is kind of like a Batman situation too, right? Yeah, because, I mean, if you're going to have the best tech, you're not going to be, you know, working at Starbucks. You know? <laughs> There's a lot of sim- similarities between um, Green Arrow and Batman and the, and the way they do things. I think Green Arrow is a little happier, um, you know, and he's he's more lighthearted, I guess. But he, uh, you know, they have tech and they have c- their own companies and they, they also have uh, charitable works that go through that company and stuff like that. Right. Um, I just think that he's a little bit... Um, more green arrow is a little bit more of the people yeah like i'm not saying batman isn't but batman's like he doesn't want to talk to anyone and he he also wants to protect everyone and also batman doesn't mind putting the hurt on someone oh batman will put the hurt on somebody (laughs) but but then green arrow in in that scene where he shot the dude in the arrow and he was twisting the arrow right right he was interrogating so i don't think he's afraid of it too much either but really interesting is he definitely has me intrigued I'm, i'm gonna be following green arrow um, until it gives me a reason not to, <laughs> you know, so well, I bet, but, but also Oliver Queen has a better disposition than, than Bruce Wayne. Cause as Oliver Queen, remember he's sitting there talking to the waiter going, you know, and then she didn't even like my beard, you know, he's, yeah. he's, he's kind of that whole thing. And then the guy, I like what the guy said, well, if you didn't tip me as well as you, I probably wouldn't like it either. <laughs> you know, well, I, think, I think the origins, the origins of the two characters when compared to are of course, dramatically different. Um, Batman was a product of his environment where his he parents was a were shot. Of yeah, his parents were shot. We all know his parents were shot. Okay. <laughs> the pearls. Let's not talk right, about the pearls. The pearls hit the street. But um, <laughs> obviously, very dark. You know, and and Oliver Oliver Queen was was he he got shipwrecked on an island, had to learn how to survive, and it just gave him perspective that certain things are important and certain things aren't. Right. So I, I think um, I don't know. I'm I'm looking forward to. Uh, to more issues from there and see where that goes i like the artwork too real clean looking yeah that i was i was really happy with that i, I really liked the way the art was very looked. sharp angles same thing I, I i don't even think i don't even think we even mentioned that about the rebirth one shot really love the artwork on that one on the yeah dc stepping it up like the the dc's art for a while was getting 
too busy. Yeah. You know, it was beautiful. But it was more like beautiful in like a painting kind of way. <laughs> and when you're trying to like follow a comic, it's too much. It's right. you're just like, wait, what did I miss something? It's very very clean but still high quality art. And I, I liked it. Um, the next one that we'll touch on is the one that Adam didn't read, uh, Green Lanterns. It's actually not that heavy of a book to to kind of discuss really quickly. I feel this book was just an in introducing, and I'm not saying this is bad, but introducing that there's going to be a female lantern. Well, two new lanterns, because basically in the, the const construct of now, the Guardians are no longer there. Mm -hmm. Um and Sinestro's group is far off deep reaches of the galaxy. Basically, the, the premise of the book is we have two new Green Lanterns. Uh, one guy who I'm not sure of his backstory, but he is pegged as a terrorist, I'm assuming. And um, But uh, he was in Guantanamo Bay and somehow got the ring. And then this other girl who also... Uh, you know, just, just had a, a rough life, also got the ring. And they've been called by uh, Hal Jordan to work together, to train, to protect Earth. They're together to protect Earth because Hal is going to have to go off and, and take over and take on Sinestro. But, uh, you know, so this, this was really just setting up both of them. Uh, and he, you know, they arrive and they're going to take on... Um, uh, this manhunter droid and they get their asses handed to him but then it's Hal said that this was a training exercise for them and they both failed and of course the girl and guy thought they were like the only ones so they're kind of going back and forth and he's like and Hal is just like laying the line on no you're not the only ones you in fact you're going to be working together and you're going to need to rely on each other unfortunately you know the guardians aren't around to train you so I got you the next best thing. And that shot actually was really, really cool because it was a full page panel and it was the Justice League characters right there. So you had Flash, mm -hmm. Wonder Woman, Batman, all of them hanging out, going to be the ones that are going to train them on Earth while Hal goes and takes off and tries to take on Sinestro. So that's kind of where that set that up. So basically Hal is not going to be involved for for right now because he's Pretty going much. somewhere else right because he's going to be doing something else so uh yeah so that's really what this book is setting up it was interesting i i'm not really a big green lanterns kind I've of i've never fan. been huge into green lantern either um you know uh so i'm just it's kind of like okay that was a cool intro i may i may pick i may look at it like the first couple of issues and see where it goes but it's i i can from this point on, I've never really been that into it. So artwork was good. Um, the artwork yeah. looked great. Uh, it was a it was a solid intro, but I think we you know if you if you if you don't know anything about these characters, you may feel a little lost, like I did at first. But of course, there's Wikipedia, you know, source of all human knowledge. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, I, I just I felt that it was it was a good intro, but I'm not sure how long I'm going to stick with it. Yeah, I, I've never. I think that's kind of why I didn't read it too, because I. And I'm not saying I don't want to read it, but it was the last one that I was wanting to read out of the four. <laughs> yeah, you know, because I. I read I that always, today too, because I read all the right. other ones that night that I talked to you, and this one I've, I, I just read today. Green Lantern to me has always been the. Wow. And I don't mean this as an insult, but has always been the X Men. To me, where they're. They're almost a completely separate universe. Right. Unless Green Lantern's part of... Unless Green Lantern's part, part of, of Justice, Justice League. League. Right. So it's almost like you're getting into a whole different thing. You know? And it, sometimes I'm so I'm so into what is going on on Earth right. that I don't care what, <laughs> <laughs> what fucking the Green Lanterns are doing or whatever. Um, but I have noticed some differences with Lantern, especially when they added... And this wasn't recent, but when they started adding the multiple colors and yeah. Start more deep into that. It's it's interesting. So I think I'll pick up the next issue and, and see where it goes from there. And I th um, the it, end page, the last page showed, I guess, the new villains for I guess it's the Red Lanterns. Uh, the father of the Red Lanterns is is going to take on Earth because they showed and it's like, yeah, those two won't be a, a problem for us. So they're going to take on Earth now. So I guess that's the first arc of the of the series. Right. Um. 
I know you really want to talk about the Batman one, but I think we should hit Superman before we hit Batman. No, we do. Both of them I equally enjoyed, so that's fine. <laughs> yeah, but which 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 made you orgasm faster? I think I would have to say I enjoyed Batman more only because I understood it more. <laughs> Superman was confusing me a little bit because I, I was out of the loop. Right. And it was more – the Superman issue – and we're talking about Superman now, right? Yeah. Superman's very – it wasn't – it was it was a little emotional too. Yeah. Because obviously Superman has died, you know, and and we, we see Lana who in this universe is like an engineer type or whatever. Right. And she wants to – um she wants to take his remains to small smallville and just it, it's deep stuff going on and we were introduced more thoroughly to i mean basically narrated the fucking book um, right <laughs> the new superman who i think and i might just be ignorant by thinking this is a theory but i think he's a superman from the the previous dc universe yeah um and he's he's his whole thing was he was like, well, Superman will come back. I, I have a way to bring him back to life. Um, and then, but that doesn't end up happening. <laughs> right. So it's, it's, it's the Superman issue is a little heart wrenching. Again, artwork was great. Uh, you can tell that it was, it was colored in a way to suit the tone. Yeah. Very dark, you know? I, um, I, I mean, I like the fact that, you know, they're saying, yeah, the new 52 one is gone. But we're bringing back the Superman from the death of Superman, you know, and it it was very cool because, you know, that was a long, long time ago. Yeah. So it was. Really, so this is the Superman from back in the day. Right. Like, yeah. what was it? The 90s? Like, the because isn't that when they killed yeah, him off? The Superman was. Um, yeah, I think. Yeah. And uh, so that's a lot of history back there. Which is kind of cool because then you can kind of almost their way of kind of retconning all the shit that happened with him after that. Right. <laughs> you know, you um, can pick up from back then, which, right. is, which is interesting. So, it, and, it, and it is a good choice for Superman, especially because, you know, a lot of people think, you know, he's a Boy Scout or what have you. Um, but, uh, and it was cool because in that instance, you know, while he's quote unquote being vague with Lana, he's be, you know, we're seeing everything that happened in those final pages of that, of that series, uh, which, you know, or he's taken on doomsday. Um, still one of the, one of the, uh, best ends for a character, you know? Right. And, um, I, I thought it was really cool. Cause I still remember that, you know, I still remember and I have that, you know? And, uh, so it was kind of like, Oh wow. So they, they really are going to this, this point and doing it from this, this area. And then, to find out that, well, yeah, he's he's going to have to do this because that's what worked for him, you know, and to find out that he was missing that in this new. And it was very it was very interesting for him too that he he his initial plan, which we can see at the end of the book, is, has changed. Right. His, his initial plan was to stay out of the affairs of that universe as much as possible. Which and brings it, into, which brings into account how did he end up in this universe? Exactly. You know. So. And that wasn't explained. And like I said, I haven't been following it, but I read those first last. I read the run of when the other super, when the new Fifty Two Superman died, mm -hmm. and no one seemed to know who he was. Right. Like, and Wonder Woman was there. Everybody was there. They they all were like, "Who, who the fuck was that?" And then he just boned out. But um, so it's going to be interesting to see with that. But it also plays into how Superman is always. He's the um. He's the righteous one. Like he's like, I can't interfere in, in this right. universe, you know, and 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 sometimes that gives him a bad rap. But he's kind of he's the power girl of this universe, right? <laughs> I've always I've always liked Superman because Superman he should be is called Power Man <laughs> and have Super... that big triangle right Power in the, Man hey. in the middle of his chest. <laughs> um, Superman's always been more of a of an ideology. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's 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 what we should aspire to be that kind of thing which it depends on who's writing for him i mean if you get really good writers in there it could be some of the greatest books you're going to read you get writers in there that don't know what they're doing they're just going to keep throwing bad guys at them yeah, and it's going to get boring the villain of the run yeah right um so i'm i'm actually very intrigued i 
there's so much it, there's so much richness going on in the Superman story that I I really want to get into it and I, I want to follow it. I think out of all four books, this is the one I was most excited about the next issue. Yeah, yeah, uh, and this was actually one of the ones that I was least least interested aside from the Green Lantern ones to read mm-hmm. because you know usually the Superman books are always kind of meh, you know. Uh, because you know they make him invincible. It's like, well, who's he gonna fight now, or who from Krypton is alive now that's going to, you know? Yeah. What giant monster are they gonna make? You know? <laughs> right. Exactly. So... And it's so easy. It's so easy to get lazy and do that with Superman. Like just monster of the week. You know right. what? What's he gonna fight? But when you really get him in a quality arc, I mean, that death of super. The, I, I don't think they called it death of Superman, but whatever it was. The last few issues, really good writing. I mean, it was it was really good. I was actually like, shit, I should have been reading this. Um, and I hope that continues on. Yeah, because uh, at the end of the at the end of the issue, you, you realize he's like, I'm gonna continue what you started, kind of thing, you know? Right. And uh, so I, I think that's that's actually, I, I I was yeah at the end of it, I was like, going, oh god, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to read this. And it's gonna be interesting to see how the rest of the Justice League responds to him. Yeah. Because they're are they're still mourning the death, right? You know, especially Batman. I'm going to be very interested to see because they're they're best friends, Batman so. and Superman. I so don't care. So I guarantee you, there's going to be a fight in there. They're they're probably going to be a little bit of a conflict, right? <laughs> I, I think out of out of all of them, Batman's going to be the least ready to jump on board, right? You know, because he's like that. You know, and and uh, and now the whole thing with him and, and Wonder Woman, because you know they had the thing for a while. Yeah, so we so. need to see. We need to see what's going to happen. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Uh, there was a little part that kind of made me like. I was like, "Bruh!" When uh, <laughs> the new Fifty Two Superman was dying, the really quick exchange between him and the uh, the pre Fifty Two Superman, I guess we can call him, um, and just saying like, basically, I can't remember exactly what was said, but like, all Superman cared about was that the world was going to be protected by someone. Oh, that's right. it. He didn't care about himself. He just he was worried about everyone else. And that's kind of Superman's thing. Yeah. You know, so there's no more to say. It's just really good book. I'm I'm on board. All right. Last and but last not least. <laughs> Batman Rebirth. Dude. Go ahead, Adam. First of all, we see a reboot of what I have always thought is one of the most underrated villains. <laughs> Fucking Calendar Man. Look, Calendar Man is obviously gimmicky as fuck. Okay? I, re- I remember in a in a show not too long ago, you said, just fucking give me Calendar Man. I don't care. Calendar Man. Look, and they've, they've revamped the character where he actually has like a, a superpower where he ages with the seasons and then he sheds his skin in the next spring and is reborn. I'm like, what? And they were explaining it where... He's reborn as a new person, but has all the previous memories. Memories. So that so they were saying, and we'll get to we'll get to Superman's uh, new um, quote unquote sidekick in a moment. You mean Batman? But he's, or Batman? Sorry. Um, he said uh, he goes. So essentially, how are we going to win against someone who always is getting better? And Batman's like, we're going to have to keep getting better while he's kicking a fucking tree, training know, right? shit. <laughs> so badass, dude. <laughs> but. The major thing from that book that we need to talk about is this new sidekick. Right. Not Robin. Not Robin. I like that. It was like, well, if I'm not Robin, then what? Like I said, trying something new. Trying something new. The outfit is um, yellow. Right. Yellow and black. Is he a fucking bee? Like, I don't don't know what's happening. He's bee man. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But he... It has a very Batman look to the uh, to the head to the headpiece, right? Um, kind of what, what um, a Batman Incorporated kind of thing. A little bit. I was kind of I was kind of laughing though because there's always that running joke that Robin is just Batman's um, distraction so he doesn't get hurt. <laughs> and this new guy's got a bright yellow fucking suit, right? <laughs> so that was kind of funny, but. Um, <laughs> seems like a cool the the new guy seems pretty cool we haven't really um delved too deep in i, his I have character. to say not as annoying yeah as, not as annoying not as annoying as like say Just somebody Damien named Damien. Or, yeah, yeah i was gonna say or jason 
He he may you know pre Bat- pre, pre Red Hood. Batman broods. Damien whines. Right. You know, it's just whatever. I mean, Damien has had some really good arcs himself. Just him as a character, I don't like. Yeah. You know, but anyway, um, cool character. Uh, they obviously some people are, are buzzing about how he is an he is an African American. Um, the funny thing is, I didn't even notice that until I read other people were noticing it. Um, but yeah, he's black. To me, to me, it's like if you notice yeah. that, you're part of the problem. Right. I mean, like. I don't I don't say who cares as in like I think it's dumb. I just who cares because it's, just, it's a dude to me. I don't I don't you know whatever. Right. You know what I mean? But we're not we're not getting on a soapbox about that today. Um not the, today. Not today, <laughs> but there will be a day. There, there will be. Um, oh, first of all, I got to say fucking Batman has a T-Rex. Yeah, he's what? always had that. He's had a T-Rex since when? It's a it's not a real T, right? I can't remember so first of all, um, Steve is referring to, and I love when they do this in a Batman book where they give you the two-page scene oh, yeah. of the Bat Cave, and you'll see the giant coin, which everyone knows, and then you see the T Rex. But I can't remember Batman T Rex. Let's see, Bat Cave, the T Rex. Of course, you can fucking tell me shit. So, so like. Why didn't we see that in Batman v Superman? Where was the T Rex in there? <laughs> um, Batman into keeping a robot T Rex earlier on in his career in his trophy room. T Rex, that's uh, he also points out that. So yeah, I know it's there. <laughs> um, Batman and Batgirl are forced to fight a gigantic mechanical T Rex. I don't know. It's it's one of the bad guys. It's I. It might have been the Joker. I don't know, but somebody. Somebody made him fight a giant mechanical T-Rex, and he kept it. So, oh, here we go. DC Database. can't believe if I can't fucking remember this. Batman's T-Rex is a giant animatronic dinosaur kept in the Batcave as a trophy. It was a robot that Batman fought during an early adventure on Dinosaur Island. Oh. <laughs> yeah. It's a, and, and you'll see other stuff like the giant Penny and giant Joker card. You see those in yeah. there. We all know where those are from, but... um. Yeah, I mean, they always, that's always been in his trophy room. But the um, artwork again, great. I have no complaints. And that's kind of surprising. And I'm hoping it holds true for the rest of them because when New 52 came out, like Wonder Woman, I fucking hated the artwork. Yeah. It was just like real scraggly looking lines. I'm like, oh, Jesus. That's one of the reasons why this new reboot of Constantine, I fell off of. The story was a little meh. And then the artwork was just so sketchy. They do that with just... Constantine a lot, though. And... Like, it's almost like I got to draw it really dirty because he's doing supernatural shit. It's like, no, you don't. Yeah. It's... You know. It, you know. Yeah. But, um, but yeah. So, yeah, with, with uh, this Batman story, definitely a setup. But I liked how they used Calendar Man. Uh, that was a cool little, like, um, just like, uh, it was a kind of a cool, quick villain in, in my, in, in my view of it. it yeah. Did... Cause he wasn't the main focus of the story. Right. Um, uh, but it was a cool, it was a good enough villain to suit what it needed for that issue right. or for that one shot. Um, so I thought it was, it was really solid. Yeah. The artwork was great. Um, the introduction of the new character, very interesting to see how that plays out. Um, you know, got to see Jim Gordon and Lucius um, yeah. in there again. So uh, yeah, I'm 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 really looking forward to that All Star Superman. I mean, All Star Batman. Uh, that that particular run, I'm really looking forward to because Scott Snyder is going to be doing that one, which is individual Batman stories from different times and different eras. So really looking forward to that. I like how involved. Jeff Johns, Scott Snyder, like how they are in the comic books right yeah. now. And I, I think that's the biggest strength. Jeff Johns, we, we like to make fun of him sometimes, you know, but he's talented. And oh, yeah. And when he's involved in a book, it usually means good things are going to happen. Yeah. Um, I uh, Isn't he Isn't he the one that's running the TV shows, too? Yeah, he's the one that's been um, fully integrated with the TV shows. He helped them start off arrow, but he was really involved in the flash, which is why I think we see 
the flash kind of moving heavy into the dc universe right um, was because of was jeff johns really got into that he's supposed to be working with affleck for an original batman story but using elements from co- different comics they're writing a script together um uh, yeah, jeff johns so. is definitely the the decision maker right now with the dc universe not just with comics but with television yeah I think... he's definitely yeah he's one of those that like and i and i i'm gonna touch on this in uh in in my show later in the week uh just another podcast but i know i know a lot of people are wishing jeff johns could be their kevin feige you know yeah um but as as i'll discuss in the show it's it's basically like well yeah cool but he needs to have control and that's right. that's where the issue comes, especially with the movies, because, you know, we have DC Films, which has Jeff Johns is, you know, going to oversee the movies. But how much control is he going to have versus when Warner Brothers goes, eh, no, you know, and if that, Warner Brothers is smart, they'll just let him have full fucking control. Right. If they're, which if is they're bas- smart, <laughs> which is basically what Disney does. Right. And that's why Marvel's become so successful. Yeah. And um, so, yeah. And in, in this instance, they're going to kind of have to realize, OK, you know what? The television series, I mean. I mean, look, you, all three D, um, CW shows were renewed for the next season. Legends of Tomorrow, Flash, and Arrow. Even though Arrow was probably the weakest of the three. But then you have, now they're going to bring Supergirl over to the CW, which didn't do as well on um, on CBS. You know, I mean, come on. They have four shows on the air and Marvel only has one. You know, and so, you know, I mean... DC's killing it in the TV realm. Right. And uh, so I think that's, uh, I, I think as far as the way they're kind of doing the comics right now, I think it's it's really solid that they're kind of incorporating old stuff, but they're also, you know, bringing out some new stuff. And we'll have to see how that goes. And next week's run of new Rebirth stuff seems kind of interesting. Let me double check on that real quick. Um, because... I'll pull it up. I have my my epic pull list in front of me right now yeah i was gonna say i was gonna go over to my pull list too and see what uh see what i can come up on here i have for june 8th we have action comics now action comics and detective comics are both coming out on june 8th but they've decided to keep like they don't have rebirth issues unless they're coming out now they have aquaman rebirth is this week Right, and The Flash, and Wonder Woman. And the Wonder Woman, yeah. So, um, yeah, so the thing... They were w- talking, but I was watching this panel, and Jeff Johns was there, and a bunch of other people. And they said with Action Comics and Detective Comics are kind of being refreshed too, but they're going back to the, the old original scheme. numbering. Yeah. 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 yeah, they said basically it's it's their oldest running books, and you know they want to keep the respect there, and I, I appreciated that. I thought that was cool. But see, action comics and detective comics are almost like the one-shot stories a lot of the times. Yeah. Like, that's if you just if you're if you're just getting into the DC universe, a lot of times you could pick up those two books and you're you're you get a taste of what's going on. Right. And um, the thing the thing that I'm looking at too is, um, I mean, I'm not really excited about the action comics story arc because it's Lex Luthor. Yeah, trying to fill up the spot, and I always kind of hate that. I mean, they've done it before, you know. Where Lex Luthor is, he always comes off as pathetic. Yeah, and I'm just like, I was looking at, and I'm like, going, I'm not really sure I'm feeling that. Right. <laughs> so you we'll know. see. I mean, I'm gonna pick them up, um, because you know I'm getting back into comics. When you get back into the DC universe, you have to see what action comics, detective comics are doing. I mean, I'll read it. Yeah, I mean, I'll right. be I'll be looking at uh, that and detective and seeing how those work out. But you know, it's it's one of those where, like I said, with the, with uh, action, it's just because I'm not a big fan of making Lex Luthor the hero because he's like the he's like the whiny little kid. But he never ends up being the hero. Like right. he he wants to be in control. Yeah. So it always ends up backfiring for him. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and now with this new Superman in place too, we're going to see how that works. Very excited about the Wonder Woman rebirth. Um especially with the new movie coming out. I know that's going to be a big focus. Right. Um The Flash of course. Of I course. mean, stepping off from the one shot. I mean, we we have to see what's happening in the Flash. Like 
I will sell a child to get the Flash issue. Yeah. Like, I need to see what's going to happen. Um, and Aquaman, of course, I'm, I'm going to pick that up, although I don't really know what's going to happen with Aquaman. There's nothing. Well, I mean, he's getting married now. I mean, from what we saw in. Um... Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean hey, more power to him. Good for him. Yeah. Right. I mean, <laughs> we're bringing the love back, I guess. Definitely. Right. Um, now. I almost, when I saw them on the beach, I was like, can you feel the love tonight? You know? <laughs> so that's. That's going to be I'm – I'm just going to go through June because I have them all listed out here. Um, June 1st and June 8th were the, are the release dates where we're only seeing rebirth issues. Um, June 15th and 22nd, though, there are no re- rebirth issues. We're getting issue ones of the issues that were rebirthed for that month. So June 15th, you'll see Batman 1, Green Arrow 1, Green Lanterns 1, also Harley Quinn 29 if you're interested. Um, <laughs> Superman number one. Uh, and June twenty second is, of course, the another the next action in Detective Comics, uh, Aquaman one, Flash one, and Wonder Woman one. They uh, something I forgot to mention. They're going bi weekly now, um, which is kind of funny. Like the issues are two ninety nine, but they're bi weekly. Like oh, right. thanks. Yeah, exactly. Um, so we're not paying five bucks an issue, but you're gonna be paying six for two. <laughs> but I'm kind of okay with it. Because, yeah, because at know, least there you're getting two for that price. Yeah. Right. So, um, typical. Now. See. <laughs> Shut up. I was uh I was noticing two things. One, I'm surprised Harley well, I'm not surprised Harley Quinn doesn't get a rebirth because she, it's such a zany fucking comic book. Yeah. Like it's it's off in its own world. Um next month is more expensive. So if you're if you're getting into the, the rebirth issues and you want to get all the issue the all the rebirth issues and you want to continue to get the issue once. So like all the rebirth issues, I have all the this priced out. June first was twelve bucks. Eighth was fifteen bucks. Fifteenth is fifteen bucks, and twenty uh, second is fifteen bucks. Now next month there's a problem because you have the second round of rebirth issues as well as everybody's issue ones. So it goes from fifteen to twenty one to twenty seven to twenty four. But then after that, it, you're settling in. If you're getting all the issue ones of the main lines, you're around twelve, fifteen bucks every week, which is pretty doable, you know. So don't get a skip a couple Starbucks coffees. Right, there you, you can get them. You know what I mean? Get some quality story storytelling. But this is uh, an exciting time, people. All right. So. On that note, I think it's time we go into our one awesome thing. So my one awesome thing this week is it's just something I saw online. I thought was pretty hilarious. Uh, As we know, since uh, Disney basically is retconning all the post Return of the Jedi (laughs) canon, uh, a new book that was that's come out called Star Wars Bloodline is actually focusing on uh, princess leia as in the book she there is um uh let me see if i can find the line oh okay here it is uh in the novel uh the senate of the new republic decides on both sides of the aisle that they need some kind of new centralized leadership they decide to vote in a first senator instead of a new chancellor someone that would be able to guide along the voting process more cleanly but didn't necessarily wield unilateral power in any way And as a respected member of the Senate and a war veteran, Leia gets pushed into nomination until uh, people start questioning her, quote unquote, bloodline. Uh, Because obviously, you know, she's a uh, she is the daughter of (laughs) Darth Vader. So I guess that has to come out at some point. But the reason why this even comes up is because in promotion of the book and given our current political uh, tension. Uh, they made a fake uh, political ad at, against Princess Leia for this position and in what she hiding. And it's really it's some of it's kind of interesting. Other than a little tongue in cheek, you know, like uh, one of the points in this in the video was she says to respect all um, to all respects all species. Yet why doesn't she believe a Wookiee deserves a medal? And it shows like the. The scene from the movie where she's giving Han and Luke the the medals, but not uh, but not Chewie, and uh, you know, and 
uh, what was it? Support small businesses, but is co- is considered a uh, what do they call her? A hut slayer, and they show her like choking uh, Jabba the Hut. So it's funny. It you know the links in the uh, in the show notes if you want to check it out. It's tongue in cheek. Don't take it as like it's serious or anything like that. And it's just but it's time. It's timely too. It's timely, it's yeah, exactly. Year. In an election year, especially you know for those of you keeping an eye on the American elections. Yeah. It's just, it's something you would see here, <laughs> which is sad in most yeah. instances, but uh, it was a funny little video. I saw it. I thought that was, it was a, uh, it was a good little like uh, commentary, but uh, yeah, that was my little awesome thing this week. Um, mine isn't so much awesome. Just something I noticed, uh, <laughs> <laughs> which, you know, okay. Um, so obviously, uh, as I'm sure everyone knows, Muhammad Ali passed away, age of 74, um, not too far from where I live because he lived in Scottsdale, Arizona, his later years. Um, now, I'm not going to go into what everything that Muhammad Ali did for two reasons. One, because mostly everybody knows. Um, and also, if you don't, it'd take you about five minutes to look it up hmm. on a slow computer. Like, seriously, <laughs> it's not going to it's not going to be a big deal. But that's kind of the point. So there's what I th- I actually did know this, um, but Muhammad Ali during the Vietnam War, he refused to partake in the draft when they drafted for people to go fight Vietnam. So when I heard I, I heard this through a Facebook post where someone was saying he everyone's saying he's a hero and he's just a draft dodger and we should be, you know, blah, 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 blah. So I was like. Now, this is me because I like to think constructively. (laughs) I go, I know enough about Muhammad Ali's persona to know that he was a pretty decent dude. So maybe something else was at play here. So I did some research. Now, it took me 30 seconds to find out that he did not go to the Vietnam War because of certain political reasons, not just because he was a pussy and didn't want to fight in a war. Um, a lot of young people might not know this. I should, I mean, I'm in the age group of people that are complaining really. Um, but the Vietnam war was not, a, it wasn't world war two. It wasn't a war where everyone was on board. Um, so Ali was quoted to say, um, let me see where he said, uh, where the fuck? Oh, okay. Now keep in mind, um, Muhammad Ali did speak in a, in a certain, um, certain dialect of his time, you know, so I'm going to read this exactly the way it's written. Uh, He said, man, I ain't got no quarrel with them Viet Cong. Why should they ask me to put on a uniform and go 10,000 miles from home and drop bombs and bullets on brown people in Vietnam while so-called Negro people in Louisville are treated like dogs and denied simple human rights? So that quote kind of elaborates and, and you can definitely look up more details on this, but he, he, he basically told them, arrest me. I'm not going, you know, you're this, I'm not fighting for a country that doesn't fight for me and my own basically is his stance on. So to me, it's painfully obvious that he wasn't fighting in the war because he didn't find it just, and he didn't feel that he should have to endanger his life for something that, he's not even being treated right you know and they stripped him of his uh his first world champion um titles and a, a few other titles as well and, and, and i think he was banned for a couple he of was years. banned banned from boxing for a while of course then he came back and won world champion again yeah because he's the greatest fucking boxer that ever <laughs> is it. um but it's just it's funny to me because we live in a time where and i was t- talking to steve about this we live in a time where we have access to all human knowledge yet nobody utilizes it Oh, absolutely not. They just jump right on board with, you know, and and it's the other thing, too. And this is more of an American or United States problem um, where bl- patriotism is fine, but blind patriotism is not. Right. Um, America's government isn't always in the right. You have to think critically about why people are doing things. And, and I think there's. You know, there's nothing wrong with supporting the troops. I definitely support the troops myself. um, But I don't always support the reasons why they're being sent to places. But I understand that they're not the ones making the choices as to where they're being sent. You know, so 
I don't know. I just thought it was an interesting thing to think about. And, and also, on a basic note, a man, doesn't matter who he was, has passed away. He never raped anybody, never beat anybody. And, well, I mean, he didn't ring. But, I mean, <laughs> you know, never, never did anything bad to anyone like that. And you really shouldn't speak ill about somebody when they pass away. It's disrespectful. It's disrespectful to his family. And I'd say that about some a normal Joe working a nine to five. Not well, just because he's Muhammad Ali. Well, one of the things that I, I kind of noticed, and I was mentioning this to, you know, uh, uh, to someone, is that it's simply the reason that they're saying what they're saying is because it's the anonymity of the internet. They can yeah. say whether they're not held accountable to, you know, to uh, for what they say. It, it's like, um, what was it? Uh, James uh, James Gunn. Uh, when that issue of Steve Rogers Captain America came out and the whole he worked for Hydra at the end of it um, he uh, James Gunn went on his Facebook page and stated that you know not really sure you know why everybody's all up in arms about this but you know it's a creative decision is it a right one can't tell you but he goes it's a creative decision and you know you got to respect the creative and of course one person on his Facebook page comes out and said, calls him like um, a communist and that he hopes someone takes his cat and throws it in the wood chipper. And I was like, what the fuck? You know, the funny thing is, is that and, and it's exactly what you say. No one behaves like this in public. Yeah, because if you do, everyone is going to attack you. Yeah. They're going to tell verbally or physically. It depends on what you say. Right. You know, it's – it's, and to me, when I see that, I'm not impressed. I think it's pathetic. Yeah. Like you're such a giant pussy right now. And, you know, you like, know and he, he, he took a screenshot and then put it on there. But he, you know, wiped out the guy's name. And people on there are like, why did you wipe his name out? You should have just left it up there. And he's like, because he goes – that kind of going to breathe the same thing. Exactly. He goes, and, and I'm not going to – and I'm not going to do that. And yeah, it's it's basically because the internet gives you that anonymity where you can just say things out of just plain ignorance. Because the sad thing is, the sad thing is though, especially younger people with this constant Instagram, the constant everything in their life has to be shared. They don't realize that every single person is a, is their own brand, you know. Yeah. And and like like Adam Riley, me, I'm a brand. I'm not a marketable brand, but I'm a brand. <laughs> So now me, I'm always honest anyway. I'm, I'm, I don't, you know, whatever, but I'm not going to say things outlandishly for no reason, because then people are going to think that I'm some kind of piece of shit and I don't want people to think I'm a piece of shit, yeah. but the, but a lot of people just don't care, yeah. you know, and, and there, there's a lot of them are trolls. They just like to see people get fired up, whatever. Yeah. But, but people like the people talking about, Muhammad Ali or, or that cat wood chipper thing those aren't trolls those are people with fucking emotional issues right you know like you're just the Muhammad Ali thing is misinformation of course because nobody fucking reads anymore right they get all their information from BuzzFeed you know <laughs> so they don't the they top don't, 10 list and they only make it right. down like three so I read on BuzzFeed that Muhammad Ali was a draft dodger so fuck him like right. what right you know so it's it's um it's just interesting to me. I, 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 I didn't want, I know the, the whole, this section's supposed to be cool shit, but I just thought it was, I was interested if somebody passes away and, and it always happens. Like Prince passed away and people were so quick to say he had AIDS from the eight. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, oh, yeah. and, 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 I'm and nobody's going to hold their feet to the fire for any of that. That's the, that's no. why they get away with it. But my, my question is, and my overall interest in this kind of thing is why well i know why but it's sometimes it's it saddens me to feel that people are this way like that they don't think yeah anymore everyone follows trends so much but now with the internet and information being so open people are following intellectual trends but they're not being intellectual about it right and they're just making themselves look so fucking stupid flat earthers 
<laughs> everyone's following this flat earth trend now and no one understands the basic laws of physics anymore. because because then you would have to read you have to educate exactly. yourself and nobody wants to do that or remember what you learned in middle school you know right. anything like that oh there's you know, like three paragraphs on this wikipedia page i can't read all that i explained i was telling steve i told my my kid my oldest kid came up and said um well, she found out someone was talking about Earth being flat. It was the uh, that B.O.B. dude, the the rapper. Oh, Jesus. So, of course, he's an expert right. to my daughter. You know, and she's like, why is he saying that? Is the Earth flat? I said, no. And she goes, well, is is that a theory that you have? That I'm like, no, it's not a theory. The Earth isn't flat. It's it's just not. <laughs> and I, I used an example because she asked me why everything's round then. And why is that more plausible? And I said, it's fucking physics. It's the way gravity works. I said, when when you see water beating on something, is it a disc? And she goes, no, it's a ball. And I said, exactly. So fucking gravity works. You know, it's it's just, uh, I don't even want to get into it. That's a whole <laughs> fucking podcast in its own on that flat earth shit. But what was it, Neil um, you know, DeGrasse, the DeGrasse Tyson? He, he, I read recently, I think earlier today. He said that people believing the earth is flat is due to a lack of proper education, which is basically the nicest way to say you're a fucking moron. <laughs> right. You know, and I don't know, whatever. People are just misinformed and they, they like being misinformed. And truly, ignorance is truly bliss, I guess. Hmm. So, whatever. A little retrospective right, kind right. Of thing at the end of the show, but uh, that's it. That's all I have to say. All right. Well, on that note, I'd like to thank everybody for checking it, checking yeah for checking the show out this week. Uh, you can subscribe and get this show every Monday downloaded to the listening device of your choice. You can catch us on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, or Libsyn. And if you're old school, go directly to the website, thelazygeeks.com. And go to every single one of those places and comment. Right. And um, tell us what you think, how you feel about life and the existence of consciousness i don't know whatever you want to your, fucking talk about your theory on the flat on flat earth or right. maybe, maybe you have a new theory like hexagon earth or you know oblong quadri uh, what was that what's a 20-sided die called oh i don't know it's like a quadrahelion or something like that <laughs> Uh, you can also catch us on social media, facebook.com slash the lazy geeks, Google plus Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat all under the name, the lazy geeks, one word. And if you want to skip social media, you can definitely just send us an email at the geeks at the lazy And you can also find me on the interwebs on Twitter at a middle age geek, Instagram, middle age underscore geek, or check out my blog, the middle age geek.com. And you can find me on the internet at pornhub.com. <laughs> <laughs> someone's gonna search adam riley at pornhub i guarantee it <laughs> if i show up on a graph from pornhub i'm gonna fucking lose my shit uh any of you have a male fantasy you want to uh engage in you can also reach adam riley at uh <laughs> hey now well, uh, real quick before we part uh, i want to know and this this ties into the comments and i want anyone of our our regular commenters or new people or even steve i don't give a fuck <laughs> but lately at least once a month i'm getting people who send me a facebook friend request okay and it always follows the same kind of pattern um where they're not from the united states they're from a different country mm -hmm. and they just want to talk mm -hmm. and i've i've entertained these people just to see what they want to talk about and sometimes they'll ask like how old are you or you know basically the equivalent of age sex location right um and that's it though they don't say anything else but it's weird because it's you could say oh it's just people reaching out trying to get to know other people okay fine but it's never happened before hmm. now all of a sudden there's just random foreign people i had someone from um the first one was liberia yeah. which is that's a random place to, to get a message from and then oh, um, they didn't they didn't tell you they were stuck in a location and their wallet got stolen and no know. it wasn't see that's what i was i was waiting for the fucking grift right right but it never happened so i'm like oh okay and i talked to that chick for for like a couple days yeah and so she started talking about loving me or something and i was at block right uh, and then today it was a chick who said she was from georgia and i go the country or the state? <laughs> right right 
<laughs> and she said the country she goes it's not a state and then i i go well in a, hmm. in the united states we have a state called georgia and she goes oh that's really fun and she just kept asking me like like what do you do for fun and i'm all what the fuck is happening like this isn't aol like nobody <laughs> does this anymore <sighs> and it's just all of a sudden you know and and they it's not like they're coming oh i heard you on the podcast that then it would make sense but they they're not doing that right you know, so I don't know. I want to know if anyone else out there is getting these weird fucking hit ups. I'm not. I don't get any. I don't get this any. Is nobody wants to hit you. They see my picture and they're like, damn, this motherfucker, right? Yeah, I'm trying to. I'm like, damn, it. that shit is dope. Yeah, no. <laughs> but um, let me know in comments, emails, whatever, if you, anyone else is getting these. And and please have someone else getting it. It's starting to creep me out. <laughs> I feel why, like, like why you, kind of, right? I feel like I'm on some kind of bulletin foreign bulletin board somewhere you know it's weird georgia and liberia i mean historically i guess liberia has somewhat of a connection to the united states but you know still uh all right and uh yeah i guess with that uh that's it for this week yeah uh i'm stephen vargas i'm adam riley so until next time peace out This has been a production of the Lazy Geeks Network, available only at thelazygeeks.com. Goodbye.